Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a date picker in Power BI. Stay tuned. All right, so a date picker. What are you talking about a date picker? Well, I got a couple of emails and some comments and some videos, and I was actually working on a project where someone asked this specific question. Hey, Patrick. I need to create an on-screen date picker where I select just a single date, not a range of dates. I don't want to scroll through a list of dates. I just want to choose one date and then it filters my entire report. So the first thing I said was use a custom visual or maybe use the filter panel. Wait, 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 it's too much talking. You guys know what I like to do instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. What I did was, so this report, Let's pretend this is a report I was working on and we had this year slice and I'm like, yep, there you go. There's your date. And they're like, no, we want like an individual date like today or yesterday or we want to choose a day from last year, but we can't use a relative date slice. So don't bring that thing up. I was like, OK, all right. All right. So I said, well, just just do this. Take the date, drop it here, get rid of the year. And now we have our date. And I said, sort it, sort it descending. And you have your latest date right there. And now it's filtering. And then I just kind of sat there like, <laughs> is that it? And they're like, who who you think is going to sift through all those dates? I need like a little calendar to pop up and I choose a date. Why can't I do that? And I'm like, well, you don't want to use a, you don't want to use a custom uh, visual. So this should work. And they were like, no, Patrick. I was like, oh, oh, I got another idea. Hang on. I got another idea. All right. So I got rid of this. I said, let's remove this. And I opened up the filter panel and I took date and I drug it on to filter for this page, went to advance and I said, is, and I say, there you go, right? There's a, there's a date picker, click apply. And now your report filters. And I was sitting there like, ha, 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 yep, that's what it is. And they were like, okay, Patrick, you're not listening. You're not listening. I am not, I don't want to use the filter panel because I need it on screen. We're going to put some very specific filters there and we're going to lock them and we're going to hide the filter panel. We don't want people to have access to that. We need this date picker to be on screen. And I was like, hmm, start scratching my head. And I said, okay, I got to go take a shower. That's why I do my best thinking. I got to go take a shower. And then I had this brilliant idea. I said, oh, I got it. I got it. All right. So. Back on my laptop. So get rid of this filter. We're going to get rid of that filter and close this guy. We don't need this. Then I took the date and I drug it over here. All right? I said, all right, this is going to be great. You guys are going to love this. And then I made it a slicer. And I was so confident in myself. I made it a slicer. And if you go here and click on this little carrot, you'll see there's some choices between, before, after, yada, yada, yada. The two that I was interested in was after and before, okay? So I chose after because now I have a single date and if I expand it out, there's a date picker. And so I was excited about this. I was like, all right, so now I have a single date and I can pick it. And so I'm gonna write a measure that will filter just based on my, my selected date, right? So you guys may know where I'm going. I was excited about this, so check this out. All right, so I went back and I right click here and I created a new measure. Let's get my measure pane open. I called it single day total amount. And I was excited and I made a variable. I said var equals selected date, selected value. Really, really, right? And I was doing this and then I did this. Then I said, return, hang on one second, messed that up. It's all right. I love, it told me what was wrong. Return, and then I said, calculate, right? Total sales amount, right? And then I did a little treat as, right? And I like to use treat as because it assigns some lineage and it's kind of like propagating my filters or um, propagating my filters or like creating a virtual relationship and I should probably do a whole video on it. But anyway, so I do this little break brackets and then calendar date. Right. And I'll put my value because now this will give me that it'll propagate the filter down and only return total sales for that date. Right. I was so excited. I did that. No syntax errors. All right. I clicked right here. So test it out. So I took my single day and I dropped it right there. And I got blank and I was like, oh, cause I don't have any data there. 
right? So then I'm going to go some years. Uh, hang on. Let's click right here. Let's go to 2020. And let's go to, I know I have some data in May. So go May the 11th. And it's still returned blank. And I was like, what the French toast? Why is this returning blank? And I thought about it. And I thought about it and I said, oh, I know who will know. My buddy Phil, my buddy Phil Seamark. So I called Phil up and he was like, Patrick, think about this for a second. Think about it. If you're using the after or before on your slicer, it's not returning a single value. And I was like, oh, Phil, I know where you're going. He was like, okay, yeah, that's it. Think about it. If you ret if you select after, right, it's going to choose a, that date that's in the, the picker, in the, uh, the box, and then all the dates after it. And if you choose before, it's going to choose the date that's in the before box and all the dates that's before. And so you need to change your measure. If you use after, you want the minimum date. And if you use um, before, you want the maximum date. I was like, oh, thanks, Phil. That's the tip I needed. All right. So let me show you what I did. So I went back to my, my measure and I changed this from selected value to minimum value because I chose the um, the after one. Right. And now, look, my value's changing every time I choose something that value's changing based on that selected date. What? This is bananas. Now, let me caveat this. And I should have said this at the beginning of the video. You have to do this. You have to implement this little pattern in every one of your measures. Right. And so it can be a little. Uh, a little tedious to create all those measures, but it absolutely works. Um, if you can use the filter pane, the filter pane is a little more intuitive, but if you need an on-screen one, this approach will work. So let me finish this up. Let me wrap this up and show you, uh, show you what we did. All right. So I did that. And so what I did was just to kind of make a complete solution. If you look over here in the, uh, in the fields list, I have a folder where I put all of my single day. This is what I call my single day measures and you can see the exact same uh, pattern across each one. It's the exact same measure, the exact same pattern where I'm using that minimum date because I'm using the minimum, uh, I'm using the after slicer. And then over on my daily report, all I do now is I use those measures throughout. You can see single day, you can see single day. They're used throughout that report. And then I grab my date. I drop it on here, right? I drop my date right there. And what I'm gonna do is, do I still have that filter there? Yep, let me get rid of that filter. I don't want that filter there, All right? And so what I'm gonna do is make this a slicer. I love to do little things like this in video. I'm gonna make this my after. And then I'm going to format this up just a little bit. This is actually what I did for when I delivered this. And then I'm going to go here to my format option. I'm going to turn the slider off, right? Turn the slider off. And then I'm going to go to the data inputs. I'm going to increase this to like 17, right? And then I'm going to grab a, and then I'm going to change the title to turn the title on. Turn the title on. Yeah, there we go. And say select a date and change the color to black, increase the font to about 16, right? And then turn the header off and do one last thing, right? One last thing. I'm going to insert a little bitty uh, rectangle right there. Watch this little trick that I do right there on it and then say no feel wait yes i do want to feel sorry about that i'm gonna change that to white and change the line color to white and now right it looks like a little simple little date date picker and then i'll go down to 2020 and choose any date and you'll see as i select my dates that the values actually change what it's bananas. It works. It's so easy. I know there's some steps that you got to take to get this working, but if you want that on-screen date picker, you don't want to use the filter panel. You don't want to use the uh, a custom visual. This absolutely works. It requires a little work, um, but it definitely solved my problem. It was the solution I needed. 
for the problem that I was faced with. All right. What do you guys think? You got any questions? You got any comments? Let's continue the conversation. Where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.